there friends, I decided to create a tutorial video on how I craft my clay pins from start to finish so you can create your own designs. For this project, I'll be working on these cute disco cowgirl pins, so let's go ahead and jump right in. First, I print multiple copies of my pin illustrations so I can use them as stencils on the clay. These designs are approximately 3-5 to five centimeters in diameter. There's some flexibility here based on the size you'd like your pins to be and the size of your pin backings. Next, I knead out my clay with my hands until it's nice and soft. I'm using polymer clay from the brand Sculpty. This clay hardens by baking in the oven. I roll out my clay to around half a centimeter in thickness by using a rolling pin. If your pins are too thin, they will be fragile, and if they're too thick, they will not be properly supported by the pin backing. Evenly roll both sides of the clay, flipping the clay occasionally. Roll out any bubbles, uneven sections, or small nicks. I gently place my cutout designs onto the clay and use them as stencils for my pins. I trace around the outlines of my designs with the scalpel. Using a scalpel helps you to get a nice clean edge and is perfect for detailed shapes. Scalpels are extremely sharp though, so just be extra mindful while using one. To remove the outline shapes from the rest of the clay, I trace firmly around sections of the outline and cut away unwanted sections of the clay. I continue this process until I'm able to easily pull my shapes out of the rest of the clay. Be careful not to press directly onto your shapes as it could make the thickness of your pins uneven. We want a nice even clay surface. I place my cutout designs on top of the clay shapes to cut away any excess clay and create finer detail replicas of the original drawings. I smooth out the edges of the clay with my fingertips. Once finished, I follow the package's instructions to bake the clay in the oven. After the clay has been baked and given time to cool and harden, I use sandpaper to give my pins a smooth, even surface to paint on. When sanding, it's important to wear a particulate mask so your lungs are not exposed to the clay dust. If my pin surface has any bumps or nicks, I'll start with a medium grit sandpaper, then move to a fine grit, and lastly, polish the surface with an ultra fine grit sandpaper. Once the clay is flat and smooth, I clear away the dust and begin painting. I paint each pin with a solid base color using acrylic paints. Usually, it takes a few coats to do the trick. You can use any brand of acrylics that you'd like, or you can use pigmented polymer clay and skip this part entirely. There's lots of fun colors of clay to choose from. After painting the base coat, I give the paint a couple of hours to dry. There's two different ways to transfer your drawings to your pins. 
The first method is to attach a piece of carbon tracing paper to the back of your illustration and tape it to the back of your pen. Then you trace the line work firmly with a pencil to transfer the charcoal onto the clay. Carbon tracing paper has a tendency to be a little bit messy sometimes, so another less messy option is to freehand illustrate your designs directly onto your pins. Now here's my favorite part of this whole process, and that's painting in the fine details of my pins. Here's where everything sort of comes to life. You can really use any style of acrylic paints here that you'd like. Matte finishes, satin finishes, glow in the dark, glitter paints, glossy finishes, metallic paints. As long as they're acrylics, you can experiment with whatever you'd like to. What's neat about hand-painted pins is that every pin is a complete, unique, and original work of art, unlike any of the others. You can literally pin a hand-sculpted painting to yourself, and I love the energy that's behind that. You can create completely customized works of art for others or for yourself, and it really just feels so personalized and precious. Ultimately, they do take time and patience from start to finish, but it's worth it to see your art come to life. The next few minutes is just a montage of me painting, so feel free to skip ahead to further instructions or stick around if you enjoy this part of the video.
Once the paint has totally dried, I add a coat of UV resin to my pins. You need to use nitrile or neoprene gloves as UV resin reacts poorly to latex. Be sure to wear a vapor fume respirator as well. I add a small amount of resin and spread it evenly with a silicone spreading tool. I lightly go over the surface with a lighter to allow any bubbles to rise to the surface and pop. Use a UV flashlight, UV light box, or sunlight to cure the resin. Cure your resin in a well-ventilated space that is free from debris and particles. Do not work with UV resin in an area that has sunlight exposure as it cures very fast. If your pins are tacky on the surface after using a curing light, finish curing in the sunlight, checking periodically. This part isn't essential, but I decided to paint the back of my pins with an acrylic black to match the black felt I would be adding to the pin backing. I used the Mod Podge acrylic sealant to protect the paint. Be sure to follow the directions specific to the sealant that you decide to use. Shake the can well and do not dry in direct sunlight to avoid surface cracks. To create the pin backings, I use felt, a scalpel, brooch pin backings and super glue, and a cardboard square cut into the size you'd like your felt to be. This makes cutting the perfect size much easier and faster. Cut along the edges of your template with a scalpel and place the piece of felt between your pin base and the clasp bar. Use super glue to attach the felt to the top of the pin backing base. Avoid getting glue on the hinges or on the pin closure. Also, I recommend wearing gloves here as things got messy for me real quick. Allow the glue to dry for about 20 minutes. Once dry, add glue to the metal pin backing as well as the felt. Then attach the felted backing to the center section of the clay pin. Be sure to press down on the corners of the felt as well so a tight bond is formed between your backing and the clay pin. Want to give the glue another 20 minutes or so again to dry. Now we can clean up some of the discoloration left behind from the glue drying. I take a small amount of black acrylic paint and paint the felt solid black again. I will also go over any discoloration on the clay left behind from the glue. 
This makes for a nice clean look and ties everything together. Once my pins are complete, I design custom backing cards with self-adhesive protective sleeves so they don't get scratched. Cardstock is the perfect thickness to support your pin. Punch two holes in your backing card for the clasp and the hinge and slide the bar across the back of the card. You can create handmade cards or make digital printed cards. I hope this tutorial has inspired you to make some cute pins. I can't wait to see your designs. Thanks so much for tuning in everybody.